Hello. Um, we're going to discuss today uh, kind of an interesting topic, and it's uh, how we actually generate an alternating current or generate an EMF. How do we produce voltage and produce current um, using a magnetic field and a conductor? Right, so the basics of this, right, an EMF or an electromotive force is our voltage, right? So we're talking about how do I induce, how do I get a voltage, how do I produce a voltage and get it onto a conductor, right? EMF, electromotive force, that's why we call voltage E, right? Now the basic idea here is I get induction or I can induce a voltage with relative motion between a conductor and a magnetic field. And that's huge, we wanna remember that. Relative motion between a conductor and a magnetic field is what generates an EMF. So the basic idea works like this. I'm gonna build a, I'm gonna get a magnetic field, right? So in this case, I'm just gonna do two magnets. Here's a North Pole. Here's a South Pole. I'm gonna grab a different color here. All right, here's a North Pole. Here's a South Pole. I am going to take these two magnets, right? Now what happens between these two magnets is there's gonna be magnetic lines of flux, right? There, there's a magnetic force or a magnetic attraction right in between those two magnetic poles. So what happens now? We have a magnetic field, right? We need to now have relative motion between a conductor and this magnetic field. So we are gonna take a conductor. And in this case, we're talking about spinning a conductor through a magnetic field. But there's lots of times where we take a magnetic field and spin it around a conductor, like in a, a motor, right? Where we take that magnetic field and we spin it around the rotor. Um, anyway, so what we do is we take that conductor. So I'm gonna take, this is my conductor right here. So I take my conductor and I start rotating it through this magnetic field. Right? As my conductor is right here, it's not actually cutting any magnetic flux. Right? These are called magnetic lines of flux. So as my conductor is right here, it's not cutting any flux. But as I start to rotate it, I'm going to rotate it this way, right? which I mean for me is counterclockwise. <laughs> uh, so I start rotating it this way through the magnetic lines of flux and I start cutting more and more and more and more. Eventually when I reach right here, my rate of cut is really, really high. I'm cutting my lines of flux at 90 degrees and my magnetic flux is actually strongest at the center, right? So I'm cutting a lot of magnetic flux right there. As I keep rotating, I'm gonna get less and less and less, right? I keep rotating and eventually my conductor reaches down here when again, I'm not gonna be cutting any magnetic lines of flux. Keep rotating, I'm ro cutting more and more and more and more until I'm cutting a lot of flux, but I'm down here at the south pole, which is actually gonna cause current to flow the opposite direction, or my induced voltage is gonna be opposite inside that conductor. But anyways, I keep rotating, rotate down to here, and then if again, I get back to where I start eventually, right? So I'm just rotating this conductor through the magnetic field. Now what happens is something really cool. So. Again, we're going to go over this one more time really quick. Talk about what happens as I rotate that conductor through that magnetic field, right? So here I start. As I start rotating, I start to cut lines of flux. I'm cutting lines of flux until I'm cutting a peak. That would be my peak right there, right? Cutting my peak and now I start to cut less and less and less and less until I'm eventually cutting zero again. Then I start to cut and cut and cut, but now I'm cutting by the south pole, so I get my current flowing in an opposite direction where I reach that negative peak, we call it. Okay, so I reach my negative peak, and then I start coming back up and up and up and up again until I'm now cutting zero again. Now that process right there is how we generate an AC alternating current sine wave, right? Uh, so I have a positive alternation, I would call this right here. This is called a positive alternation. I'll 
alternation, and I have a negative alternation. And that's just about how current is flowing through that conductor. All right, so past the North Pole, get my positive alternation, past the South Pole, get my negative alternation. That makes what we would call one cycle. Right, so I'm talking about one AC cycle. Um, right, and again, we could, if we wanted to, we could throw some numbers onto this as well. Right, we talk a lot about electrical degrees, right? So, okay, here I've gone 90 degrees. Right, 90 degrees is where we hit our first peak. There would be 180 electrical degrees, right? From the start, I've gone 180 electrical degrees. Actually, in this case, 180 mechanical degrees as well. Another 90 would take me to 270 degrees. And then a final 90 would take me back to 360 degrees or zero. Now, in this case, because I only have, you know, one mechanical revolution, 360 mechanical degrees is providing me also 360 electrical degrees. Now, what to keep in mind when we are talking about generating this EMF, right? The things that are going to affect it is the strength of my magnetic field. The stronger my magnetic field, obviously, the more EMF I can produce. The rate of cutting, which we talked about, right? How many lines of flux am I actually cutting, right? How much relative motion do I have? And then lastly, the length of conductor. How much conductor do I actually have round up inside that magnetic field, right? So three factors that affect my EMF are the strength of the field, the rate of my cutting, and the length of conductor inside that magnetic field. Right, that helps us now generate this EMF. Now, the last thing that I wanna talk about is how this ties into frequency or our cycles per second that we are always talking about as electricians, right? Here in North America, we are use 60 hertz, meaning this is happening 60 times per second. So just very briefly, what we can break that down to is here, we have two poles, and when we spin it one time through, we generate one cycle. All right, so there's a formula that we break down and use a lot, especially as electricians, which is frequency equals poles times speed over 120. Now, we could spend a lot of time talking about this formula, but this right here is our individual poles, right? Okay. So in this case, we would have two poles. Um, the speed is revolutions per minute. How many times in one minute am I spinning it around? So if I was talking about this generator right here, and I wanted to get 60 hertz out of it, I would actually need to spin it 3,600, 3, 3,600 revolutions per minute, right? So in order to get 60 hertz, I would need to go with my two poles, it would be times 3,600 revolutions per minute over 120. And where that 120 comes from is because we need to turn revolutions per minute into seconds for cycles per second and pole pairs, right? You need one pole pair in order to get one cycle. We divide that by two for individual poles. So two times 60 on the bottom gives us that 120, right? So, as we can see, in order to generate that frequency of 60 hertz, we maybe could consider adding more poles into this situation, or we're gonna need to spin that generator really fast. Um, that's just kind of a quick overview of generating an AC sine wave and how that ties into our frequency going along with it. Um, it's a really big topic and we could talk a lot more about it, but um, either way, thank you very much for watching. Uh, check out some other videos and have a great day.